Now we are on to the inspection portion of the squaring up a block series. I am teaching you guys this before we actually square up a block so that you understand specifically what square is and what you're trying to achieve. Now I'm not going to be saying that you're going to be miking it. I'm not going to be miking the dimensions because the dimensions are according to your print, but I will be showing you how to check for square and parallel. So the very first thing you want to do is have a surface plate and you want to make sure it is very, very clean. You can use the table of a mill if you don't have anything else. Just make sure whatever table that you're going to be using is very flat. You don't want to use like a wood table or the ground or something stupid like that. So what you want to do is use a very flat ground surface or a surface plate. And you want to make sure you clear everything off, especially being in a machine shop or in an uncontrolled environment. It can get very dusty. It can get chips on it. Being in a machine shop, chips tend to be everywhere. You want to just kind of spray it down. And I don't feel like moving the Cadillac gauge, so I just kind of left it there. Get some paper towels and wipe it down. This is a very important process. It may be a little bit more time consuming, but it's going to save your part because if you actually measure it with dust under it, you get a wrong measurement, you go out there and you try to fix that, your part can go under size, or what's gonna happen is when you measure it, you think it's dead, but in the end, it's really not. You were just measuring on dust. So you wanna be sure to be very clean. And this is a nice shiny table now, so we are ready to inspect. Things that you are going to need is going to be an indicator with an indicator base. Make sure that the bottom of the indicator base and everything is clean. You wanna take your hand and wipe it. And your hand, as long as your hands are somewhat clean, are a good cleaning utensil because of all the pores and the, uh, it, it collects the dust for the most part, long story short. But um, you wanna make sure you have your indicator and this is a Michitoya indicator. We actually have this on our website. It's under store and recommended tools. It has a link to Amazon, which is a little bit cheaper and a lot cheaper than MSC. But it is a great indicator. As soon as you buy it, you're able to move this face. It's, I wanna say inch, inch and a half face. And it's very nice. It's um, very visible, but um, it has a ruby tip as well. But besides that, you want to get your part and you also want to get a big square block of some sort and a ground pin. And I will be showing you why you need those two things in the next few minutes. So go ahead and take the time, get together your indicator, indicator base. You can get a, if your block is fairly small, you can get a, a V block or something like that. Some, just as long as it's a square ground block. You might be able to get a one, two, three block, something like that. This is just gonna help you check your part for perpendicularity. So get a ground pin, it could be a gauge pin. That's what I'll be using as a gauge pin and a uh, V block of some sort. And then get your part that you actually wanna measure. So step one, get clean. Step two, make sure everything else that you're gonna be using is clean, but you want an indicator, indicator base, a ground pin, and you wanna get your calibers or mics to check the dimensions. I'm not going to be doing that because I don't know what dimensions you're going to be checking, but you want to make sure to check those. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and jump in this and move to the next step. So now we have our things here and let's go ahead and get started. So I have my indicator and I position it like this so that you guys can see it. And I'm going to go over a quick rule of an indicator. Looking at it sideways, if the stem is 90 degrees you want to be no more than 15 degrees down and that so you can have an accurate reading I've seen some people have their block and they'll have their stem at this kind of angle and that's that's not accurate at all and so what you want to do is position it to where your stem will touch the part but your actual indicator will not because it'll just bump and mess it up so First thing we're going to do is check for a parallel. So, and one more thing I forgot to add is you, you'll need a marker because you're going to write zero on one side where you're going to set your indicator and then you're going to write the dimensions that you read on the other side of the part. So, first things first, we'll put our part here 
and we're going to check for parallel. What you want to do is zero out your indicator. All right, and you want to go corner. That's positive one thou. And that's minus about five tenths. So we're going to zero it out right here. So we get one thou and about five tenths. So I'm going to zero it out on the corner that I called out zero. And then right here, I'm going to write a plus 0 0.0015 on that corner. And then I'm going to run down to the other side of the part. And this is not checking for perpendicularity. This is checking for parallelism. So that's positive 1 thou. And that's 0. So looking at this part, it's actually kicked up like that angle right there. So it's positive 1 thou 5 tenths. So I'm going to go ahead and write on the other side of the block 0 and plus 0 0.0015 so as you can see I wrote that on there so that is parallel and you can flip the block around 90 degrees and do the same thing but on to the next step we're gonna check for perpendicularity so now I have my ground pin and I have my master face which is gonna be your ground block so it could be a 123 block 246 block as long as it is a ground block for you to rest your part up against. So I'm going to rest my block on top of the gauge pin which is resting up against your master face. And then I'm going to take my hand and push it up against the master face resting on top of the gauge pin. Alright and this is going to check for perpendicularity of this face to this face. Okay. So we're going to reposition the indicator go down on zero and we are going to re-zero that out I'm going to move across the part to the positive one thou five tenths and it's about positive one thou which the part was already leaning this way so actually it's probably off only about five tenths with perpendicularity we're going to run to the other side of the part and I'm reading zero and then I'm going to run to the other side and I'm getting about positive six or seven tenths. So this part is perpendicular within about five to six tenths, but it is out of parallel one thou five tenths. Okay, and that's how you check each face. Now, another important face that you're gonna wanna check is long ways. A lot of people will forget to indicate this up and down before they cut this part. So if you're ever an inspector or you want to inspect your own part or somebody else's part, this is also another important face to check because a lot of people will forget to cut this face or indicate it before they cut it anyway. So you want to re-zero that out. Just run across the part just to make sure. Okay, and that is how you check for parallelism and perpendicularity. And that should cover this tutorial. In our next video, we're going to be cutting on material and starting to square up a block the way I like to do it and then we'll go into the other ways that you can square up a block with different shape materials. Alright and uh, anytime you square up a block in the next few videos the different ways you do it be sure to check for perpendicularity and parallelism to see which way works best for you. If it's accurate it's fast and it becomes perpendicular and parallel use that method and other than that we will move on to the next video.